Hey guys, Keith Sharanis, Distinctive Designs. Hey, follow along with me on this next project. I'll be building a large pedestal table for our formal dining room. Every good project that we do starts with a great design. So I think I've got some key areas of the best tables that are out there all put into this design. So check this out and uh, let's get going. Alright, just wanted to share some specifics on my actual table design. I get asked a lot on how did you do this and things like that. Uh, first off, my actual pedestals will be made up of three key pieces. But first and foremost, before I even get into cutting these, these will be glued up five pieces of one and three quarter inch poplar. So my finished dimension, or width so to speak, on each of these three pieces will be eight and three quarters inches. As I begin to glue up on this one, what's critical here is that the center piece, in the very center, will have a tenon about four inches wide coming down, and similarly speaking on this, this will have a mortise pre-cut into the pieces that I glue up to receive the pedestal itself into the base. There will also be a tenon here at the top to go into the armature, the same width and the height of this. So a lot of these dimensions I've laid out here and they'll be on the video. So I think if, if you spend some time on this, you can come up with your own customization for the table. It'll really lead to a lot of success in your building up uh, and having a great plan. One of the final pieces that was really important to us was the tabletop itself. We wanted something really heavy. A lot of tables you see have that three quarter inch top, whether it's walnut, cherry or whatever, then indented about six inches. There's turned on its side like a three and a half inch piece of wood surrounding that perimeter, but indented from the final finished perimeter. What we're gonna do is take after the three quarter inch finished tabletop, I'll lay on its side another piece of poplar, one and three quarters inches, going underwards about three inches. And that'll give that real heavy hand hold when you hold that table thinking this thing is a massive hunk of wood. So let's get cutting and proceed from here, guys. I wanted to uh, start up my pedestal base here. And I pre-cut this one here, and I'll explain why. This is my inside of my pedestal base. I will be layering up on the outside here two additional pieces on each side uh, of pedestal that I'll be cutting out of this board. I'll have to rip this down, but this is a finish width of eight and three quarters. When I'm five layers up here, I'll be eight and three quarters inch thick. Uh, but two of these will be cut at 20.5, layered up on the outside here two on the other side and then I'll compress these. What I've done to make this easier, and you can choose other ways, some guys like to lag and everything like that, bolts or screws. Um, I basically pre-cut like a dado just by cutting this shape out here. This is for the pedestal base. This literally will drop in and I'll show you here on, uh, you've seen me glue those up, but that will just drop in here. I'll use probably some Gorilla glue that will expand and fill the joint after I've leveled it. Similarly, up top here, I will proceed to have the uh, pedestal arms. That'll... I have completed my glue ups of my laminated uh, pedestal, each of my bases, there's two of those on each side, two pedestals and my two tops. I then took my template, I made a template, kind of played with a couple different designs, proceeded to make it and then do the standard, you know, bend it in half to get it and then you get a view of what it is you're actually looking for. Um, after I did that though, this is not what I would use to make your template on your wood. What I learned uh, actually from YouTube is to go ahead 
and make your template again, get a real good one that you're totally happy with that mirrors kind of like what it is you want to do. Put it on one side of a, uh, in this case, just poster board, and then transfer that design over to a piece of MDF or quarter inch plywood as I've done here. And after you get that, um, I did transfer the design over to the other side, but you do not need to cut that side out. The reason why you don't really want to cut the other side out, this is your unique side that you want to mirror on both sides, you know, of your uh, actual pedestal. So what you want to do is go ahead and proceed. This is the actual same size. Go ahead, lay it down, transfer the, uh, the image onto your pedestal, and then just flip your template over to the other side, then you get an exact duplicate versus a fold in half. So proceed to do that. You can do this same process for the lower portion of your uh, pedestal bases and your upper portions. This of course is. Guys, we've made our first initial cuts on the bandsaw. Uh, the pedestal base is here, and this came out pretty good. We've also made the first of a series of two key cuts onto the pedestal itself. So if you recall, before I even started uh, cutting my pedestal, I had my initial design on all four sides from my template drawn on each of these sides. However, to finish in the second in the series of cuts is we need to take our pedestal, I'm going to lean it up here, take a hot glue gun, and the pieces that we cut off, we need to lay these back onto the pedestal with a light tack of glue. And a couple of spots, four spots on a piece like this should hold this and set that back in. And then of course this final piece. So when we do this, what we basically end up getting is a completed pedestal that we can now cut these final cuts following this. If these weren't on here, I sanded uh, this one here, uh, both with my belt sander and a little bit of the orbital sander. There is a lot of sanding involved in these. For instance, you can see here, I just cut this on the bandsaw. Also, I just cut my pedestal. So while the pedestal is cut out real nice, you do get a lot of ridges. And you can see those in there, the cuts as you turn your blade. Uh, to finish sanding. All right guys, got a lot of uh, cutting on the final portion of the pedestal bases, pedestals and armatures. They're about 85% of the way sanded and they're looking real good here. So they're just placed here out of the way right now as I'm starting my tabletop. All right, starting to lay out my tabletop here on my mobile workbench. Um, what I've done here basically right now is on my workbench, I did put down already some plastic. Also, I laid out four of my pipe joints proceeding down the length of it. And then I actually put down some uh, straight two by twos, three randomly on the underside, and you can see the three on the top. These will assist in any misstepping of the boards as we're going down and doing the glue up. I'll clamp these together and it'll keep any, any misstepping of the boards on their joined edge. Um, a lot of times when I do tabletops, I'll go ahead. Uh, just showing you a little bit of the biscuit joinery. This is some scrap pieces of wood. What I'm doing is putting just a very simple little slot into the wood on both sides. This biscuit goes in between here like this. And then these glue up. This really assists, like I said, with any misstepping of your wood. These are locked pretty good going up.
had a successful blow up of my tabletop. After that was complete, I went around the underside perimeter here with three inch poplar boards. These are one and three quarters inch thick. Uh, these on the edge give the appearance with my three quarter inch top poplar boards. That my tabletop is about two and a half inches thick. So that was something we wanted. Additionally, what I did was I added these stringers uh, two on the outside edge here, they are kind of like a pocket for this uh, finished pedestal. There's one in the center and then of course the other side. These are just kind of mortised. Uh, they're not glued up yet, but they will be here shortly. One of the things that we wanted in the design is to not have a stringer, commonly that you see on YouTube going across here, keeping these pedestals from wiggling. And sometimes they're at the very bottom, sometimes it's a mortise uh, into the actual pedestal itself. I'm hoping we don't have to do that. These just get in the way. If they're on the bottom, you can't vacuum underneath it. You're hitting it with your legs or high heels and they're gonna get all scratched. And even here, they're in the way of knees. So what I am hopeful for is these pedestals are pretty massive. Mine are coming in at about nine inches, just under nine inches thick. And they're glued up and the receivership of the finished pedestal into this pocket, I am going to have some galvanized metal pieces. There'll be four on each pedestal. They drop in here. They'll be screwed first into the underside of the tabletop. And then uh, we'll turn, obviously, the pedestals, the approximate distance apart that we need. We'll have those set up in the dining room. We'll carry the table in and to kind of just drop it into place into this uh, pocket here and then proceed with heavy bolts lagging it so to speak about four or five inches into the actual pedestal from the bracket i believe to show you some videos. Uh, one of the important characteristics of this table design I felt was, and I identified this early on in my video, was that on the underside of the pedestal, you will commonly see with a lot of designs where there's like a stringer, like cut into the bottom of the pedestal base from here to here, or else a mortise and tenon board that would go into this pedestal right here, vertical into this one. I really did not want to do that. Uh, if you have it on the bottom here, it's an impediment to feet and scratches. You can't get your vacuum cleaner underneath it. If it's up here, your knees are hitting it. I just wanted a cleaner look and you can see how this looks here. The important aspect of this design was, of course, my pedestals are eight and three quarters inch wide. And what I proceeded to do on the underside of my table was I built this pocket. And so this armature thickness here goes up. It's fully uh, at about three and a quarter inches thick here. It drops up into here. And then, uh, so it drops into this pocket. And then I have these little brackets, simple galvanized metal brackets. There's four of them, two on the outside, two on the inside. They're screwed into this, going this way on the underside. And then all we did was simply set up our pedestals. These were metal brackets were attached, dropped it down, and I proceeded to put them in. All right, the finished pedestal table is now in our formal dining room. Had a lot of fun doing this project. After staining, I went ahead and put on five coats of polyurethane. The product I used was General Finishes Armor Seal. It's in a satin and it's oil-based. First two coats I did a wipe on, uh, just like with paper towels, followed by three additional coats with a foam brush. And then I wet sanded between each of those coats, moving uh, progressively up to finishing with a 600 grit. The finish is like glass, uh, very pleased with the final finish. Hey, if you liked and enjoyed the video, please hit like, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, refer to my email down below. But thanks for having me along.